Well, the, this uh, housing issues writ large, including vacants, have been an issue in Baltimore longer than you and I have been alive, right? And when you think about us being about 15,000 vacant homes in the city and you add on top of that, the other housing issues that we have that have been expanded by the pandemic, right? Uh, we know that housing and access to affordable housing is a key issue for us. But when you talk about vacants and when you think about that, the majority of those, those vacant properties, about 13,000 of them are owned by private owners. And even though we have uh, so many vacant properties that are already under transformation, meaning uh, they are part of a redevelopment plan that the city has, about to be, de about to be demolished in receivership court or many of the other tools that we have to deal with that, we have far too many that are still in dilapidated uh, uh, state and that attracts crime and all the negative things that we see. Uh, that's why as a part of my $100 million housing investment through OPERA, $30 million, $9 million of that, $39 million of that is going towards dealing with vacants in an intense way, focusing in on neighborhoods that we know have a lot of vacants through our impact investment areas that are our traditionally redlining and ignored communities, but that also have seen a lot of growth and development. And when you focus in on those areas intensely to be able to eradicate vacant properties and be able to support community work and work with our housing commission and our housing departments to create uh, uh, sustainable, new, or even renovated uh, affordable housing for folks, it's a way that we can tackle vacants in a much deeper way. And we're also now implementing uh, actions from our 30 day review. Okay, okay. And so to speak to the pro private property owners who own those 13 some odd thousand homes, is there any push or things that you're planning to do differently in terms of holding them accountable with fixing? these homes that are kind of eyesores for the community. Yeah, and this is what uh, we were the focus of our 30 day review about things that we can do short, medium and long term. One of the things is, is helping us uh, speed up those processes, working, going to work with our, our partners at the court level to have a separate docket for dealing with these vacant houses when they come through for receivership and others, making sure that we are uh, taking all the legal action through code enforcement in our law department. The things that we do now, but it's really about uh, strengthening them and hastening the pace, be able to hold those folks accountable. Okay. And so um, there's some people in the community who have spoken about the dollar housing plan and they feel that a lot of the or some of the city leaders who have the most vacants in their district have sort of voted against the dollar housing plan. Do you think plans like that are effective? Well, the, the truth of the matter is, is that the council didn't vote for it, so it's not going to be sent to me. And the reality is, is what we have to do is understand that what we're doing through our uh, investment of OPERA is focusing on things and programs that we know work. When you look at Johnson Square in East Baltimore, where uh, we have been able to invest with our partners and build and rebuild Metro, where we're taking people who are renters and making them homeowners in a neighborhood that was filled with vacant houses a few years ago, built from strength with the work that has happened in Oliver, those are the kind of investments that we have to make. And that's what we're doing, being able to see this investment go into uh, Park Heights to, to benefit the first phase of the Park Heights redevelopment plan, where we'll be building senior and, and affordable housing units on properties that used to be vacant houses that we tore torn down in Northeast Baltimore, in Tivoli, in Chum, another area where this was a crime ridden vacant vacant blighted block that now will have home ownership right there. That's how you tackle these problems uh, not uh, uh, just going back to things from the past to be quite honest that you can see didn't have the impact that folks think because we still have vacant properties that some were actually sold through that program before. Absolutely and and to go um, in addition to that in terms of promoting home ownership mm -hmm. in the community um, how is the city specifically serving the people in those underprivileged communities to make sure they have access to home ownership? Yeah, and I want to be very clear about that. That's why one of the largest portions of this investment is in those neighborhoods, in our impact investment areas, because as the person who passed Baltimore's equity law, we are now going to be focusing in on the people in the neighborhoods that we left behind. When you look at that, the opportunities are there. I want folks to do their research. Go to our new website that talks about investing into Baltimore so that you can see. You don't have to just look at your traditional neighborhoods to go and buy a house. We can help you get that house in Johnson Square and Oliver and Chum and Park Heights, all these neighborhoods where we're going to be benefiting from this program. But we have the opportunities there. 
the investment and going into those neighborhoods, not others. This isn't the old days when we're taking this money and say we're going to build housing on the water. No, we're building this, these, these housing uptown, downtown and around town, East Baltimore, Southwest Baltimore and Uplands, Northwest Baltimore and Park Heights, Northeast Baltimore and Chum. And that's what we want folks to understand. We can have people moving into those neighborhoods as well. And that goes again again with the other programs that we do around home ownership right we have home ownership incentives for folks who are buying into neighborhoods in the city we're investing seven million dollars of this money into our housing upgrades to benefit seniors so that those houses are turned over to the next generation and generational wealth building that is the focus of what we're doing we investment here to buy back the block that will provide incentives for renters to be able to buy and live in their neighborhoods and be homeowners and actually save money because they'll be paying uh, eight hundred dollars for mortgage and not $1,200 for rent. That's the kind of investment that we're making here, and we just want folks to be a part of that. Absolutely. And if you could talk directly to the people who say, hey, I want to be a homeowner. Um, you know, this is something that interests me. I want to create generational wealth for my family. If you could tell them some things about what they should do to start their research and, and you know, moving forward in that process, what would you say? Yeah, I would tell them to visit the uh, housing website. They can go to BaltimoreCity.gov, click the housing uh, department's website. The information is right there for them to see. You can actually click on houses, look at all of our programs, home ownership programs, vacancy to value, everything about buying into Baltimore is right there to see in a brand new website and start there. Fill out the information. We will be in contact with you. We want to help. Talk to our partners that live in Baltimore. All the folks who are at the table in the part of this process of making home ownership a more equitable reality across our city.